Okay, so most of this quadratic stuff is really just a, revi a revision of last year, okay? So our quadratics, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, some of our factorising skills aren't the greatest, so remember turning point, three different, op three different possibilities. We complete the square, or I'm thinking this little rule here is really becoming quite popular. Just memorise that rule and substitute the a, b and c values in. Or if we need to, we can average the distance between the x-intercepts, OK? Otherwise, um, key skills, we've got to be able to factorise, um, whether it's my inspection, cross method, any of those. Completing the square certainly will enable you to factorise and making sure we can use the quadratic formula. So if we work through a couple of these, solve the following. So I'll always try to factorise first. X, X, factors of 8 are 4 and 2, and we need it to be minus 6, so minus 4, minus 2. So X minus 2, X minus 4 are the factors. So we've got that equal to 0. So then we can just solve that by saying X is equal to 2, or positive 4 is my solutions. So remember, the factors are the product of terms. 2 and 4 are my solutions. Again, I'll try to use the cross method first. 2x and x cross multiply with factors of 12, maybe a 4, 3, or a 6, 2. We need 5 in the middle. We might have got it straight up. 4, 2 is an 8. So that'll give me an 8x. 3 times x is 3x, and if we subtract them, we'll get a 5. So we need a positive 5, so let's make that a minus 3a. Eh? So 2x times 4 is positive 8x, x times 3 is negative 3x, add them together get a positive 5x. So my factors, remember, are those across here. So it factorises to 2x minus 3, x plus 4. So my solutions, take the 3 across, divide by 2, take the 4 across, all right, 3 on 2 and negative 4. If by chance we need to complete the square, remember x squared plus 6x, half the middle term and square it. We subtract that term to keep equality and I've got my minus 7 which is part of the problem. So those terms there are my perfect square, so that becomes x plus 3 all squared. Minus 9 minus 7 is minus 16 is equal to 0. Now we're solving, so instead of um, using a difference of squares. I'm going to write that as x plus 3 all squared, take the 16 across. x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 16, which is plus or minus 4. So x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 4. So my solutions, negative 3 plus 4, which is 1, negative 3 minus 4, which is negative 7. Okay. Completing the square when we have a coefficient at the front. Well, let's take the 2 at the front of the whole thing. That gives me an x squared minus 3 on 2x minus a half equal to 0. So I could divide both sides by 2 at this stage if I want. So then I've got x squared minus 3 on 2x plus a half of that term, which is 3 on 4 squared minus a half of that term squared minus... Now, since 4 squared is going to be 16, I'm going to write that as 8 on 16, which is a half. Uh, first three terms of my perfect square, x minus 3 on 4 all squared, minus 9 on 16, minus 8 on 16. So I've got x minus 3 on 4 all squared. Let's take that all across to the other side and get 17 on 16. Take a square root of both sides. Is equal to plus or minus the square root of 17. And the square root of 16 is 4, so I'll just write it like that. So x is equal to 3 on 4 plus or minus the square root of 17 on 4. So I'm really happy with that as an answer. It's quite possible that we might write it as a quarter. 3 plus or minus root 17. Okay, so any of those forms of the answer um, are quite fine. So, yes, 
that works, and certainly, yes, that works. Okay? Quadratic formula, okay, works every time, any time. Um, it's not always the quickest way, but it will always be and give us a solution, okay? So in this instance, A is equal to negative 3, B is equal to negative 12, C is equal to negative 7. So sketch the graph, use the quadratic formula. So I need some, um, what do I need? I need some um, x-intercepts. So if I want to solve this equation equal to zero, my x-intercepts are going to be x is equal to minus b, so minus, minus 12, plus or minus the square root of negative 12 squared minus 4 times a times c. It's a yucky equation over 2a, which is equal to minus or minus is a positive 12 plus or minus square root of 144 minus 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 makes it a minus uh, 24 is it 3 that's a 7 21 times 4 is 84 over negative 6 so x is equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 60 on negative 6, so what's that going to be? 4 15s, it's probably as good as it gets. So therefore, it's equal to 12 plus or minus the square root of 4, which is 2 times 15 over negative 6. So divide everything by 2. So I might even bring the negative sign up. So 2 into 12 goes 6 times, so I'll put negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 15. So they're my x-intercepts. Now in this instance, because it's a messy equation, I don't think I'll worry about completing the square. My turning point is at minus b on 2a, c minus b squared on 4a, which is equal to minus negative 12 over negative 6. C, which is minus 7 minus B squared, which is 144 over 4 times A, which is negative 12, which is equal to positive 12 over negative 6, which is negative 2, comma, 144 on 12 is 12, so it's a minus and minus is a plus 12, so negative 7 plus 12 is 5. So the turning point is quite nice. So if we squeeze a little quick, little graph sketch in. So we've got our, extend our axis a bit there. So we've got our turning point at negative two, positive five about there. My intercepts, negative C plus or minus root 15. Root 15 is a, almost four, so negative six minus four on three, which is out here somewhere. And negative six plus four, which is still negative. So it's over here somewhere. Let's go to my original equation there. We can see the intercepts at negative 7. So a quick sketch might look a bit like that. Now we've got uh, negative 2, positive 5. We'll have negative 6 minus root 15 on 3. Negative 6 plus root 15 on 3. And negative 7 is the intercept. All right, running out of room, express 2x squared in the form and sketch the graph. So we have to complete the square. So it's going to be similar. Take 2 out the front. I've got x squared minus 2x minus 5 on 2. Now, since we're not solving this equal to 0, I can't just cancel the 2 in this case. So 2 out the front. x squared minus... 2x halved and square it, plus 1, minus 1, minus 5 on 2. 2 outside of x minus 1, all squared. So minus 7 on 2. Multiply my 2 back through. And we'll have y equals 2 times x minus 1, all squared, minus 7. 
So that's the form we need. So a quick graph sketch, I'm going to assume means we don't need intercepts. So our turning point is at 1, negative 7, which is there. My intercept at negative 5, which is about there. So the graph comes down and looks a bit like that. All right, nothing too new in all that, but it doesn't, I know it doesn't mean we're experts, but you've got to practice it. Okay, exam one. Here's our graph there. Write f of x in the form ax plus b all squared plus c. So we need to complete the square, don't we? Hence, write down the coordinates of the turning point. So let's just complete the square. Two at the front. x squared plus 6x plus 5. Two at the front. x squared plus 6x. A half of it is 3. Minus it. Plus 5. So we get 2 outside of x plus 3 all squared. Minus 9 plus 5. So we'll have f of x equals, multiply the 2 through, x plus 3 all squared, negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4, times by 2 is minus 8. Uh, put in the, hence write down the coordinates of the turning point, part b, turning point, the coordinates of the turning point are equal to negative 3, negative 8. Okay, so now on to the discriminant. So remember the discriminant, the discriminant, okay, is that area or that part of the formula that's under the square root sign in our quadratic formula. And obviously, if it's under a square root sign, it means that if it's negative, we can't evaluate it, so there's no solutions. If it's equal to zero, it means me one solution, and that's negative b on 2a. However, if it's positive, we'll get two solutions. So let's have a look at some examples. Find the value of the discriminant for the expression. So the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac, which is equal to 8 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is equal to 64 minus 28, which is equal to 36. So whilst it hasn't asked for information like this, that means there are two rational solutions. So if my discriminant is a perfect square, it means we'll get rational solutions. If it's a non-perfect square, like a 15, 13, whatever, the square root of those numbers we can't evaluate, so I get two irrational solutions. Obviously, if it's zero and if it's negative, we know the answers to them. All right. For what values does this particular quadratic equation have two solutions or one solution? So again, as soon as you see anything to do with the number of solutions, you want to evaluate a um, discriminant. So the equation we need to solve, I need to solve kx squared minus 2kx minus 5 equal to 0. So discriminant has to be greater than 0 for part A. So let's work out the discriminant, which is B squared, negative 2K squared minus 4 times A times C. Let's solve it equal to 0 for now. So the discriminant is equal to 4K squared plus 20K. So I need to know equal to greater than zero or less than zero. So if I was to sketch that discriminant, and I reckon that's the easiest way, my factors, 4k, k plus five. So I've got one solution there, one solution there. Dotted line, those sections there are above the axis, so that's where it's positive. This is where the discriminant is negative. So it's less than zero here. And at those points, it's equal to zero. So I've got the three sections there to give me zero, one, or two solutions. And I just need the corresponding x values for those. So two solutions. The discriminant is positive, so I need that section of my x-axis and this section of my x-axis. So I need that section there, which is greater than zero. 
and this section here, which is less than negative 5. So, therefore, I need the k value, k such that k is less than negative 5 union, k is greater than 0. And we can sort of formalise it in set notation if we wish. One solution, the discriminant has to be equal to 0. I need the set of elements k such that k is equal to 0 and negative 5. Okay, and obviously then if I wanted to know where it was no solutions, the k values are between negative 5 and 0. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so if we need to work out some general rules, it really is determined by what form of the equation we get given. Okay, if we got given a turning point or um, we know that the, the parabola is on our vertical axis, we can start with the form A or B. If we've been given two intercepts, well, we might start with form three. If I've been given the turning point, I'll start with form four. If I've been given three different points, well, we'll use the form of the equation over the page. So just as an impromptu example, if we were told the turning point was at uh, negative 3, 1, and um, maybe the y-intercept is at, I don't know, 4, what's the equation? Well, since we've been given a turning point, I know that y is equal to some a outside of. Turning point is at three, negative 3, so it's x plus 3 all squared plus 1, and it goes through the point 0, 4. So if I substitute, I have to put the A in there because that's my dilation factor. It could be fatter or skittier. So I need to substitute a point in. In this case, it's four, 0, 4. A times 0 plus 3 all squared plus 1. So 3 is equal to A times 9. Therefore, A is equal to 3 on 9, which is 1 third. So my equation, 1 third x plus 3 all squared plus 1. Okay, um, if by chance we were told the x intercepts are at uh, negative 4, 0, and 2, 0, and it goes through the point 1, 2, well, in that case, then we know we're going to start with my intercept form y is equal to some x plus 4, x minus 2. And we have some a multiplying the whole thing. It satisfies the point 2, 1. So 2 is equal to some a times 1 plus 4, 1 minus 2. So we've got 2 is equal to 5 times negative 1, so negative 5a. Therefore, a is equal to negative 2 on 5. So in our equation, negative 2 on 5 times x plus 4 x minus 2.